Hey everyone, welcome back. So this week we're going to be talking about simple shaping exercises. Now, what is shaping? Good question. I haven't talked about it much on my channel here, but it is my favorite part of dog training. So what shaping involves is really no talking to your dog. You're not going to cue your dog to do anything. You're going to let your dog figure it out on their own. It would kind of be the same as if you guys walked into my training facility and I didn't say a word to you, but Every time you made an approximation towards the goal that I had in mind, maybe that goal was having you walk in, sit in a chair, and cross your legs, I clicked and I gave you a dollar bill. If you walked towards that chair, you get a click and a dollar bill. If you sat down in the chair, you get a click and a dollar bill. If you get up and walk away from the chair, you don't get a click and a dollar bill. You're going to start to figure out pretty quickly, okay, for whatever reason, she wants me to go sit in this chair because I get clicked and dollar bills for that. Same concept with the dogs here. Now, that would be a really weird thing to do with people. However, with dogs, it's an awesome one to do. What is great about it is it's really going to tire your dog out like crazy, crazy amounts more than a regular training session. I would not do this for more than five minutes at a time with your dog. Even a minute or two at a time when your dog is first learning the concept of shaping can be exhausting for them. This is going to be way more tiring than any walk you could take them on, um, than any sort of regular training session. Now, if you pair this with a walk and a shaping training session, fantastic. Your dog's probably going to sleep for the rest of the day. So shaping exercises, you are going to use that clicker and treats to communicate with your dog. So like the chair uh, exercise with people that I was talking about, I'm going to do the same thing with the box here. Wrigley earns a click and a treat for small approximations towards my final goal. So at first that involves just being interested in the box, clicking and treating for sniffing it, nosing it, pawing at it, then progressing to clicking and treating her for getting inside of the box like you guys are seeing here, and then ultimately kind of waiting her out once she has a good understanding of that piece of it to see if she can offer me anything else. Now the offering piece of this can be very frustrating for a lot of dogs. You'll see them start to offer other behaviors at you. There she threw an lip lick, which I'm actually going to talk about later in this video. Teach your dog to lick their lips on cue. That's super fun. Um, but offering other behaviors to try and get that click and treat is what we want your dogs to be <coughs> doing throughout this. Excuse me. So Shaping basically is the process of teaching your dog to throw behavior at you. Once you have a dog that understands shaping really well, they're going to start just trying things. Like here, Wrigley has foundation with putting her paws up on things. Now, when I flipped the box over, that was the first thing that she tried. Your dog might not be at that stage right now. They might be at the stage of, oh, okay, the position of the box changed. I'm just going to investigate that with my nose. Once they get better with it, they get to kind of Wrigley's level. They're going to start trying things. How do I earn the food? Oh, cool. She wants me to touch it with my paw. Then I can kind of increase that criteria over time to, hey, maybe I actually want you to step up onto the box and so on and so forth. So you can get really creative with it when it comes to shaping. You can use anything around your house. Um, here I'm using a soccer ball, for example. Basically, I wanted Wrigley to just kick the soccer ball. Super fun exercise. The idea for shaping is to have fun and just get creative with your dog. So I'm going to show you guys a couple examples in this video. I'll take you through the box exercise, which takes a little bit to talk through, but stay tuned because I'm going to show you an exercise with a cone as well as that lip lick that I talked about in the end of the video. And I will have another video coming out next week involving more challenging exercise, more challenging shaping exercises that you can do with your dog at home. So let's jump right in. Okay, box round two. So what I'm going to do to start is actually pick the box up, even if it's already on the ground, and place it back on the ground. As soon as I place it down, Wrigley gets interested in it, and I immediately start clicking and treating her for being interested in it. Interest is the first step to shaping. So Wrigley has experience shaping. She actually knows this box game quite well, but I'm trying to break it down a little bit more to show you guys the initial steps. As soon as you put that object on the ground, you want to click and treat your dog for looking at it, for sniffing it, for stepping inside of it. 
when we're doing these box exercises, it is a lot easier to start with a low rise box, something with edges that are this tall. Most dogs will kind of struggle with stepping right into it and having the confidence to do that right away. So start with something smaller, a smaller box on the outsides. And again, you're just going to click and treat your dog for being interested in it. If they happen to step inside of it, yay, click and treat and drop the treat inside the box for them. Treat placement becomes really important when it comes to more advanced type of shaping exercises. For this one, dropping a treat inside the box will get a lot of dogs to actually physically step into the box to get that treat. So continue to treat your dog inside the box, kind of having in your brain, okay, yes, this is the thing I want you to engage with for whatever reason crazy human, I want you to engage with the box that's on the ground. Once they get into the box, you can click and toss more treats inside the box for almost a duration behavior of them staying inside the box. Now, once you feel like your dog is clearly stepping inside of the box and interested in the box, you can start to test this concept by clicking and tossing the treat away from the box. If your dog comes right back and gets in the box again, they're starting to get the concept. Now, if you were to toss a treat away and they were to go off and do something else or come and sit in front of you, that's how you know the concept's not quite there yet. So after the first couple repetitions of tossing treats in the box, you wanna stop tossing treats in the box and actually click and toss the treat away from the box to reset your dog for the next repetition. Now here you're seeing me kind of work through the next step to this. Once your dog is doing well with coming over to the box, and you're resetting them and they continuously coming and standing inside the box, whether it's two paws in, four paws in, I wanna raise my criteria at that point. The end goal is not to have Wrigley keep two paws in the box. The end goal is for her to sit or lie down in it. In this case, um, I was going for her lying down in the box. It was my end goal. So once she's in the box, I'm waiting her out to see if she'll offer any other behaviors. And I have that awkward dog that will put her her front feet in and then we'll put her back feet in and not both at the same time. Now you just saw there the box kind of topple over that obviously did not phase Wrigley at all. If that happens at home with your dogs though I would recommend treat bombing them. Um, a lot of times that can be a really scary situation your dog won't want to come back over to the box. So you can start baby steps again make them feel comfortable with associating the box with positive things. Now here Wrigley was getting pretty frustrated with me. She's starting to offer other behaviors. Um, you'll see later in this video we're going to talk about a lip lick. So I decided to help her out in this instance only because she was getting really frustrated. Wrigley frustrated is her throwing other behaviors at me like that when she's quite familiar with shaping. So here I'm jumping right back in because I think she can do it and she's starting to figure it out. There we go. She put her back legs into the box. I rewarded her with multiple treats because that was the next step that I wanted from her and I want her to understand like yes that was an awesome job. That was exactly what I wanted from you and there I'm jumping right back into resetting her and seeing if she'll offer the same behavior which she did and she offered a sit this time too. Now you might have to wait your dog out for the sit. Again I don't want you guys to actually verbally cue them to sit during this process. We want them to figure it out on their own so I'm not saying anything to her. I'm kind of just waiting for her. There we go. She offered that sit again to kind of figure it out. Now the last step to this I actually wanted her to lie down in the box which she is familiar with but it's a little bit of an extra step. She kind of has to curl herself into a small awkward ball here. Um, so I'll let you guys kind of watch the process that I take through this. She does get a little bit frustrated again and, uh, and you guys can clearly see that um, as we're going through this.
Now, I talked about approximation. So here she's actually throwing a lip lick at me. That is the next behavior I'm going to talk about. You can actually teach your dog to lick their lips on cue. Super fun. But I'm starting to shape for approximations towards that down. So once she's in the box and she's sitting, I'm actually click, trying to click and treat her for any behaviors that go into that down. So you're going to see me click and treat her for for uh, dipping her head down. Now, this is a separate behavior Wrigley has learned in the past. So it's something that I only rewarded for so long until she started to think that literally dipping her head was the behavior I was going for. So you guys are gonna see that in a minute. Here, she was kind of sniffing around a little bit. So I decided to back up a couple steps, make her feel more comfortable. And there we got the nice sit in the box again. If your dog is really struggling and leaving the box, go back and make it easier for them. This is not something that we have to continuously make it harder and harder and harder for your dog. If your dog is throwing behaviors at you like you see Wrigley doing here, you can make it easier for them. There's that head dip that I was talking about earlier. She's starting to throw these behaviors at me. The lip lick and the head dip are kind of her her go-to behaviors whenever she's frustrated. And like I said, she started to do this very deliberate behavior. So you're actually gonna see me stop rewarding her for it. And um, she kind of starts to figure out, okay, that's not the behavior that you are going for. If you guys don't reward any behaviors, the dog is your dog is going to learn eventually, like, okay, that's not what's earning me a click and a treat. I should try something else. And there's the down that I was looking for. So that is the end behavior that I was going for. I'm going to heavily reward that and then reset her with a find a treat. See if she can offer that same behavior again with not getting a click and a treat until the final behavior. Now here offering a sit beside the box. I'm going to kind of make her feel a little bit better with the find it treats because this is a, a little bit of a awkward <laughs> behavior to do and she's super awkward about it. But dog in a box, super cute. Um, so that is the, the final goal for this one. Wrigley goes on to do this a couple more times and that's how you can kind of know whether your dog is understanding it or not. You reset that treat, they come back, they automatically lie down in the box. Okay, on to the next one. I have a cone here. You guys can use a plastic cup if you don't have cones at home. Same concept as before. I'm going to place the cone on the ground and initially click and treat for any interest in the cone. If she sniffs it, if she touches it with her nose, if she paws at it, I'm gonna click and treat for that. Um, this one Wrigley also does have foundation with, so she knows she's supposed to knock over the cone, but my end goal for this was to kind of show you guys her knocking the cone over. That was my final goal for this behavior with her nose first and then with her paw. You guys can split those out into different criteria. As you're working on this, if you just want your dog to nose the cone, only click for your dog's nose touching the cone, not when they hit it with their paw. Now on the flip side, if you want your dog to just engage with it with their paw, you're not going to click for them touching the cone with their nose after a little bit. Initially, I want you guys to click for any interest in the cone, but once they're consistently coming back and interacting with the cone in some way, then you can start to split that criteria out a little bit more. So at the beginning there, you kind of saw Wrigley nose the cone and I did not click for that. She kind of looked at me like, okay, I was getting clicked and treated for that. What, what else should I do? She has experience with shaping, so she's going to be the dog to try something else. When she doesn't get a click and a treat, she's going to try something else. That's how she gets rewarded. I want her to throw behaviors at me. So here she's starting to understand, okay, if I hit it with my paw this time, that's how I get the click and the treat. Okay, now the last one is a fun one. It's technically not a shaping exercise, it is a capturing exercise. However, it's, like I said, a lot of fun. So teaching your dog to lip their 
<laughs> lick their lips on cue. What you want to do for this one to start out is actually give them a treat, just a freebie treat. Most dogs will lick their lips after they've eaten a piece of food. So wait for them to be done eating and you see that tongue emerge in any small way, in any big way. Wait for that click when that happens. Over time, your dog is going to start to understand, okay, I'm getting clicked and treated for licking my lips, of all things. It might take your dog a little while to understand that concept. They're going to get better and better at it when you start capturing small behaviors like licking their lips. Over time, it starts to become a very deliberate behavior, so you can actually see here Wrigley's lip licks are getting more and more exaggerated, and she clearly is offering that be that as the behavior like you guys saw in the box earlier in the video too so becomes a very deliberate behavior over time you can put this on cue once your dog gets the understanding of it down and they're offering it very deliberately i'm going to use the cue squirrel for this one i think that's super cute um, you can use the word cookie anything you would like to use for it just say the word right before your dog is about to lick their lips I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a little clip of something I'm going to be talking about in the next video, a little bit of more of an advanced concept um, that you guys will have to stay tuned for. But this is shaping. Just to recap a little bit, shaping is this whole exciting, different uh, subject that I haven't really talked much about on my channel, but it's a lot of fun. Basic ideas behind it. You're not cueing your dog to do any behavior at all. The communication you're using is through your clicker and the treats. Small approximations is what we're going for at first. You're not going to automatically get a lot of these behaviors. They take time and they have to build. So only small sessions. This works your dog's brain like crazy no more than a couple minutes at a time at first. You're gonna notice that your dog is gonna be a lot more tired after you do shaping exercises with them than any other training session that you could do with them, with te teaching them with just treats at their nose. Shaping is a really, really cool aspect of dog training. It's a lot of the training that I do with Wrigley pretty much exclusively at home now. So good way to wear out your dog if you need to wear them out while you guys are at home right now. And like I said, stay tuned for this, the details on this video next week and happy training.